Konnichiwa, Watashiwa, Einbach des. It's good to have you back. What I fear is one of the rarest electronic instruments from Japan, the Suzuki Varaku from 1989. This looks like a traditional Taishukoto, but is in fact a very different thing. It's an electronic instrument. That means the sound are not created with the strings that you see here, but with a digital ROM player. But still, you play the instrument with this oversized guitar pick. But the Varaku is also a MIDI controller, so you can use this to play any other MIDI synthesizer. The keyboard has the traditional spacings of a Taisho Koto. Because this is an instrument made for rehearsal. You could plug in headphones and then play it in your home without annoying your neighbors. The sounds sampled in here are exclusively traditional Japanese instruments. Mostly strings and flutes, and all of them monophonic, unless you switch it to keyboard mode. And there you can play many of these instruments polyphonically, but that disables the harp mode with the pick. A nice addition to the strings are the four drum pads here. These are also velocity sensitive. Same as with the string, you get a bit of velocity with them. The nice thing about the velocity is that you don't get that machine gun repetition effect that the Suiko ST50 suffers from. So I can play repeated notes and it doesn't sound as, yeah, as repetitive. The harp strings here work in the following way. You get three strings for the top note, one string for a note that's an octave lower, and the bass string. And you can tune the bass string to whatever you like here. Why do the first three notes produce the same note? I think that's a thing that's special to how you play the original Taisho Koto. I read that to get fast thrills, that's the way to achieve it. But I'm not an expert on the original Taisho Koto. The keyboard mode is turned on here, and then you can play this like... like a regular keyboard, but with a long travel. This enables polyphonic playing on some of the sounds. As a piano player, it's really hard to 
hit the notes correctly because of the spacings, which follow the spacings of a stringed instrument. The strings work best on the first two sounds that are marked with the red knobs because there you can play all three. On the others, you can only get the same note from the top ones and the bass note. It feels a bit strange to play a flute with a plectrum, but it's actually rather effective. You can transpose five semitones down and six semitones up, as well as change the frequency around this is based. There are a few things to note about the implementation as a MIDI controller. First, the strings don't transmit. That means you only get note on and note off from the keyboard, but nothing is transmitted while the strings are playing. If you're not in the keyboard mode, the MIDI output is also monophonic. Playing legato is only possible on notes that go upwards. If you go downwards on the scale, you have to release one key before the next one can be triggered. This limits the Varaku as a controller, but as an instrument it enhances it, because when you play it with an external synthesizer, this allows you to hold notes and to play different rhythms on the Varaku than what you are playing on the controlled instrument. If you get used to that, it's kind of beautiful. This is another one of Suzuki's beautifully strange instruments that are in part serving the needs of musicians and are in part educational and are in part just beautifully crazy, such as the Omnichord that they did, which is a take on the auto harp as imagined by Kraftwerk. There were three different versions of the Varaku, with the last one looking like something Lord Harkonnen would play. There's a similar instrument which looks very interesting because it seems just a touch more portable, but again these are super rare and pretty hard to come by outside of Japan. The Varaku is similar to the Zuiko ST50 in that it is meant for rehearsing, but yeah, this is something very different. It's much smaller, really portable. This is something you can just tuck in your, yeah, in your backpack and go around with it. This is a gorgeous looking instrument. And I think for people that are on stage, playing something like this, especially when you control other instruments or combine the two, can be very interesting. But now, let's make a track with this. I found out that the Raraku fits perfectly on my piano. And it's, yeah, it's pretty solid. So I put my iPad up here and I'm running an RME Babyface through the camera connection kit, which is right now one of my favorite <laughs> recording situations. And I'm using AUM, A-U-M. And in all the channels of AUM, I've got Gauss, my looper plugin. And I want to see if I can develop something by playing this live and looping live. Let's see what happens.
I'll be putting up this track on the Patreon as well as a sound pack so you can use it in your sampler as you like. I'm going to sample my favorite voices note by note on here and yeah there will also be some of the loops that I played here with other synthesizers there so it's a lot of music for use in your own music. Uh, thanks to the patrons for supporting what I do. Without you, I couldn't keep on hunting for strange instruments and making videos such as this. If you have any questions, do visit the subreddit or leave them in the comments below. And that's it for today's video. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.